I got a word here from someone today, this morning. I don't know who this is for. This is for your identity. It says that you are a child of the great I am. Whoever that's for, you are a child of the great I am. If you feel like you're not, there was a time that I felt like I wasn't a child of the great I am. There was a time that, man, I remember when I was, and I'll be honest with you guys, I remember there was a time that I was sitting in a field because I was on drugs. I'm just going to be, I'm always honest with you guys. I don't care, man, I'm past all that stuff. But I was sitting in this field and I was freaking out because there was this plane going over and I thought, man, it was like a UFO from hell or something. But this thing was going over and I was out in this field just freaking out because I was on drugs. And I don't know why I thought about God then or why I thought about those things then, but, but the Lord had come to my mind. Didn't even know him, but he come to my mind. And sometimes we can live through life and we think that what we go through is, is that's just the worst and last thing. It's not, man. <laughs> No, it's, it's not. You, if you're going through something that's crazy, it's not unforgivable. There's not anything that you've done or are doing that's not unforgivable. I promise you there's not. God loves you so much. He wants such a relationship with you. That's what he wants this morning is just a relationship with you. As Helen, you know, she thought, I remember when she come. I remember she wrote, me, wrote that note to Todd and got to read it, you know about who she was and how she was getting ready to go home and just, just end it all. And I know sometimes we can say it's words and different things, but there's so many people that have did that, ended it all because of something frivolous in life maybe to some, but it was important to them or it was serious to them. And I remember when she got out of the water, though, the Lord had told her how beautiful that she was. I remember she went home that night excited to go to sleep. She didn't like going to bed because she didn't like what happened at night in the night hour. But she, she went to bed that night excited to wake up the next morning. Excited for the next day. Excited for what God was going to do in her life. And no matter what you're going through, you can be that way. You can have that kind of excitement to be so um, just ready for the next morning. You know, just like a kid who it was, it was at Christmas night and he's just so excited to wake up for the next morning. We can be that way. We can be that way. I was here on the way here this morning. I love this time of year. I love, love just the fall, the leaves falling. And they were blowing down our street. I mean, there was thousands of leaves just blowing. There were gusts here and gusts there. They were just whipping around. I mean, that was just, Tammy, if you can imagine this painting right here. It's a leaves just whipping around in a whirlwind all around me. And so these leaves were blowing out. And I'm thinking how beautiful it was. And I just asked God about it. And he said that, that I pur I'm purging. I'm purging. See, because the, the trees... They have to lose the dead things on them to survive for the winter. They have to lose the dead things on them because they cannot survive the winter and nourish those leaves as well. So that's where fall comes in. It changes the leaves, changes, and then all the, the stuff from the leaves goes back in the tree. It sucks it all back in. And it waits until it can bud for the next, for the spring. And in us, in our lives, guys, we need to purge. You know, there's all these crazy movies about purging. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about a true purge of what is right and what is wrong, what is good and what is evil. We need to purge some things in our life. We need to shed off some things in our life that, that I had to shed off to get to where I'm at. I mean, I can sit here and tell you story after story after story of what I've done in my life and what I've been through. And I guarantee I would be able to match every story that you have. Guarantee it. I've been a mess. I've been truly a mess. I look back at those times and I just thank God that the experiences I went through made me strong to bring me to where I am today. For the calling that I have today. For the anointing that God has placed on me for today. 
I see people in the city that say they've gotten changed in their life. They say that they purchased this off of their life. They purchased this off of their life. But then I still see them doing the same things, living the same kind of life, living the same kind of lifestyle. And I really don't know if you did a purge like you should have. I really don't know if you did really what you needed to do and dig deep like you needed to dig. You know, we talked last week about saying this, ask Jesus to come to your heart and believing that he was raised from the dead. I looked up the word purge and it said to be clear of guilt and ceremonial defilement. And I thought, thought about that. You know, I talk about we've been raised as children. We've been raised in a tainted love. You know, when our parents whipped us, they whipped us out of a tainted version of what love was. You know, when every word they said was a whipping. For me, that's what it was. Go get a switch or get a log, whatever you choose to get. I'm still going to whip you with it. And it would be a bam, 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 bam. Tainted version of love. It would make me want to just run away for a while. But Jesus, when he, when he, when he gives me a whipping, it's such a cool thing because it makes me want to draw close to him. He's like, son, I wish you wouldn't have did that. Come here. He disciplines me, but he loves me in the midst of the discipline. And I love that thing. And I wish I would have known that as a young man so I could have taught that to my children, how to discipline out of love or how to even for me to discipline them out of love because I did the same thing my mom did. I told you not to do that. You guys remember those days when their voice would get a lot louder the more they talked? You know? I thought I told you to go clean your room. But you guys remember that? My mom would do that all the time. It started out real low and it would go, ah. and so. <laughs> but we believe some things as young kids and young people. We believe some things and then we've taken those beliefs into the next generation. And we've taken those beliefs into the next generation. And the things that we believe today, our children are going to believe and our grandchildren are going to believe if we don't change some of those things. Some of the cultural things that we do in life today need to change. There's some things that we stand for that we need to stand against. There's some things that we are part of that we need to not be a part of. And I asked the Lord about this message today. And because I didn't want I didn't even want to talk about this today. I did not. I did not. Like I did not want to come to Martinsville over going to Florida. But this is the thing. If we are the church or the true church, we failed so long, so much, so bad to our generation and the generation before. The church has failed. The church is just as messed up today as our government is. Just as bad, if not worse. It's because we've let little things come in, the little foxes that come in, that have spoiled the vine, the little foxes that have come in, that have changed things for, for long term, for generation to generation to generation. And I want to talk this morning about what we take in from the world, what we take in from this world, and how it affects us in our life. There's so many things that we can take in in this world, so many ways that we can soak stuff in and bring it into our life and, and let, it, let it resonate in our mind and our will and our emotions, which is our soul, man. It can resonate in there to what changes us and defiles us. And we don't even know it sometimes that we let some of this stuff in. How many of you, how many of you like listening to music? I love, I love listening to music. But there's some music out there that's just not good. It's just not good to listen to. You guys ever heard any music that's just not good? Lyrics that's just not good to listen to? Yeah. I promise you, if you listen to that, it's going to come out one way or another. It's going to come out one way or another. The things that we take in in this world are going to eventually come out one way or another. They really will. When you eat food... To nourish your body, part of that comes out one way or another. And this is the same type of a thing. Most of that food nourishes your body, builds your body, gives you strength. 
makes you have muscles and makes you be able to walk and get up in the morning and do all that when you eat food. So the same way that food operates in your body, the things that you take in, in your mind, those things are going to come out sooner or later. How many of you read? You guys like to read? Can't stand reading. I do it because I have to, but I can't, let's just tell you, I can't stand it. I mean, when I was in school, <laughs> some of you guys might know this book, actually. It was called Penny the Pencil. Anybody ever remember a book like that? <laughs> Do you remember the book about the little pencil that got chewed up and it went in the sewer and it ended up, ended up in a mouse's house and he used it for a lampstand and put a lampshade on it? I was in high school and tried to do a book report on that. It didn't fly. It's just a real thin. It's about this small. Didn't go. I mean, I think it was a good book report. I really thought it was a good report, but it didn't, it didn't fly for my teacher. She didn't think that was a good enough book to do a book report on. Penny the pencil. And, uh, so, so I've had to learn how to do a little better than that since then. I'm actually, I'm actually writing a book right now. It's interesting. Can't stand reading, but I'm, but I'm writing a book. So um, we'll see how that turns out. Maybe my, maybe my teacher will get the first copy. Miss Ingersky. Yeah, I'll give her a first copy. You guys like TV? I love TV. You guys like movies? I love movies. We, Shelly and I went and watched a movie um, this week. I think it was fairly clean. Um, I tried to filter it, but it was called The um, War with Grandpa. I don't know if you guys have heard of that. Um, yeah, it's, there's, there's no cussing. There's no sex scenes. There's none of that stuff in it. So it's just really good. It's just about the grandpa and the grandson fighting over the grandson's bedroom that he got kicked out of and moved to the, ba moved to the attic so his grandpa could move in with him because his wife died. So just to really neat how they wore this thing out, how they battled this thing out. It's really funny. Um, so if you like the movie uh, Meet the Falkers, the guy from that is in it. So just that's a clean movie. There's a lot of clean movies we can watch out there, but there's a lot of them that actually are going to destroy the minds of our children. You know, I mean, there's some out there, you know. I mean, anybody ever watched Exorcist growing up? Oh, yes. I mean, I'm, I hate to say it, but I did. It's a horrible movie, man. That still kind of gives me creeps. I mean, just think of it. I mean, just a, it was a horrible movie. Tammy, you didn't watch that like I did. You were screamed. You were sheltered from all that stuff. Man, I was a heathen. Man, I was a he I'm an ex-heathen now, but I was a heathen. Man, I thought those things were fun. I thought it was fun to watch stuff like that. Man, I don't even like just anything like that anymore. It freaks me out. I mean, I, I just don't like it. I don't want to watch anything that's going to... I mean, you know, movies do come out, man. When I watch Rocky Balboa the first time, man, I want to come out and just whoop on somebody because I thought, man, I could just, like, man, I could beat somebody up right now. I just learned all these, you know, all this stuff. And I thought, <clears throat> so it's going to come out. You're going to want to bring it out. So the goodness, you, you guys like movies? I love, guys, you like romance movies? Are you guys? I love romance, man. The, the Notebook, I mean, come on, The Notebook, I mean, the, I think it's pretty clean. It is the Notebook good? I don't remember, but is it good? Yeah. So the Notebook, just a, just a good movie, guys. You need to watch that. You need to get on your feminine side and watch that movie. It's just really good. But I like stuff like that because it inspires me to be. This inspires me to be a better husband. It inspires me to be a better man. Watching stuff like that, and I'm not. You know, I'm not above crying. I could cry on a blink of an eye. I can cry. And I can watch one of those movies. I love it. But there's some movies that we watch and the bad things come out. And we're gonna, it's going to bring the bad things out of us. There's video games that some of these kids are playing today that's going to bring the bad out of them. Listen, guys. I know it seems fun to kill people. Listen. Look, guys. Look at me. Boys. I know it seems fun to kill people. But really, it's not. It's not a good thing. See, anything that we wouldn't go out and do in real life as Christians, I'm, I'm, I'm noticing that we probably shouldn't set it before our eyes to watch. If we're being entertained by sin, we're probably being entertained by the wrong thing. 
if we're being entertained, and I know this is tough, guys, because this is tough for me because I'm like, I'm saying, ouch, amen, too. Um, if we're being entertained by sin, then we're being entertained by the wrong stuff. If Jesus wouldn't sit there with you and watch that movie with you, you probably should not have it on. I'm just being straight up. I think that's what God is leading us to. He's trying to purge us from all these things that we think is okay. These things that we thought is okay that we let our kids do. We set our kids down as a babysitter anymore. Some of us set our kids down, our grandkids down as a babysitter. We don't care what they watch as long as they're quiet and leave us alone. I've got eight of them, one on the way. So I got nine, getting ready, one getting ready to come, grandkids. And we got them all over at one time. If my boys are watching, it was a great time. We had such a great time. They were all amazing, um, amazing kids. But no, I mean, I probably won't do that again. Um, <laughs> Not all at once. I probably won't do it again. I mean, that's, you know, it, you know it's, it's, it's a lot. It was a lot. Um, it was. It was. It was a bunch. Watch this movie. I love you. No, but we didn't let them watch TV. Why? They, we don't let them watch TV when they're at our house. We don't, we don't do that. You know, my, my boys, my boys, loving guys, would say, they, they want to watch this, they want to sit down and do this. I'm like, no, they're grandma. Papa and Yanya's house, they're going to do what we, what we do. So we take them on hikes, we'll do stuff with them, do fun stuff, interact with them, play toys with them. But um, yeah, we don't let them watch TV. We want them to see how God is using us, and they want, we want them to see the Jesus that's in us and let that light their world so they'll know who we are when they come to our house. They know they can trust us. They know that they can, they, they can be at Grandma or Yaya Poppy's house and, have, and be at peace and have joy and not chaos or not fighting or all those things. And my wife and I, I mean, I'm going to tell you guys, we get in a spat. I mean, we're husband and wife. We get in a spat. Not that it's right that she back talks me, but we, we do. <laughs> Just kidding. Just kidding. She don't back talk me. But, you know, but we don't do that in front of the kids. You know, there's times you're going to disagree, husband and wives. That's okay. Disagree agreeably and don't do it in front of the kids. You know, if you won't do it in front of your pastor, me, just imagine me there in the middle of an argument. Will we be doing this right now if Jason was here? Probably not, no. Let's not do it. <laughs> Jesus, mostly, but not, but you know, just, you can picture me being there. I'll be refereeing it. <laughs> what I'm saying is, is God's wanting to purge us from some of the things we've been taught in the old days. Some of the things we've been taught. When we get to Christmas, I'm probably going to talk a little bit about the Christmas tree. Probably going to talk a little bit about that because, you know, there's some things that we do that are not in the Bible and there's things that we do that are pagan and we haven't even really looked into. We just do it because our parents did it and they did it because their parents did it. But so there's some things that we interact with and some things that we do in this world. We celebrate some things that we shouldn't really be celebrating. Really, I'm just being honest with you. There's some things that we celebrate that we should not be celebrating. The things that come in your life whether it be through music, books, TV, movies, video games, drugs. You know, you can take an aspirin and it'll be good for you. Or you can take meth and it'll mess you up. It might feel good for a little bit. Then you lose all your teeth. And then... I didn't go that far. I mean, I'm glad I didn't go that far. I was hooked on... When I was growing up, it was different kind of stuff. It was cocaine, all these other type of things when I was a kid. Never was introduced to stuff like they have today, like like um, our youth have today, our young young adults have today. But either way, all of it can be rid of, and you can be forgiven of it, and you can just move on and move in, like I did, move past it, move into what the calling that God has for you. But whether it's any of these things, it's going to come out one way or another. It's going to come out one way or another in your life. And it's going to affect your life. Music, books, TV, video games, movies. And it's either going to come out in the form of sin, or it's going to come out in the form of repentance and right living. All the stuff that you do, some of us good, some of us bad, 
but it's all going to come out in one way or another. It's going to come out in the way you teach your kids and the way you teach people and the way you talk to people, the way you treat people, the way you treat your husband and your wife. It's going to come out one way or another. It just will. There's no way that you can take that stuff in and just stay there. It comes out. If you have your Bibles, we're going to read a few scriptures here. I'm, I might, I might ask you a few questions. We have another mic. Do, okay, I got you. Cool. <laughs> and this, guys, how many of you believe the script, the word of God is true? Okay, if, if you don't raise your hand, just nod your head like this. If you've got a baby in your hand, just, yeah. Okay, let's do it this way. How many of you don't believe the word of God is true? Okay, we all believe the word of God is true. 1 Corinthians 10, 21. <laughs> You're going to love this. You cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of demons. You cannot partake of the table of the Lord and the table of demons. You cannot have it both ways. You cannot have it both ways. <laughs> Ephesians 5.11. Guys, this is going to be fun. It's fun. I love it when God gives me something to get rid of out of my life. I love it when he says, Jason, man, you're doing this. Really? I don't want you to do this anymore. I want you to get rid of this. And I do. I mean, it's, it's really encouraging because I love it that he shows me stuff in my life. I love it that my conscience is not seared to the point where I can't receive his word about something in my life. And I can get rid of it. I mean, I have thinking, stinking thinking sometimes. I'm like, where did that come from? And then he'll take me back to a certain period of time where that came from. I'm like, all right, let's start dealing with it right here. And we'll go to the root, deal with it, stinking thinking stops. Now, there's thinking that's going to happen. It's just going to come from the enemy because we're going to be tempted and we're going to have those things in our life. But these are thoughts that come from the way I lived and what I had put into my life. And they're starting to come out in my thoughts. I can retain it from my mouth coming out sometimes. Sometimes I don't. You ever got... You, I love just being real. You guys ever gotten a, this is husbands and wives or family, it, it, it all the same. Do you guys ever gotten a, like a little bit of a, a little bit of an argument and then that argument turned into, well, remember when you did this? Well, what about when you did this? Well, what about over here when you did this? You know, you guys remember those? I mean, huh? It's not good, Amber. Not good. Ephesians 5.11 says, do not practice in the unfruitful deeds of darkness, but instead expose them. So we're to expose the darkness according to that verse, not glorify it. We're not to glorify darkness. I mean, have you ever thought about some of the stuff that we do, why we do some of the things we do? Have you ever looked back? I mean, have you ever thought about the Christmas tree and thought, why is there a Christmas tree? What's that have to do with Jesus? What, that have, what does that have to do with, why, you know, these nativity scenes? Why are the wise men at the nativity scenes giving gifts to Jesus when they wasn't even there during the nativity? You ever thought of that? You know, your nativity scenes has all these people, um, and then they have these wise men that are bowing down and giving these gifts. Frankincense, myrrh, and gold, and all these things. <laughs> they weren't even there. They weren't even, they weren't even there. Most people don't know that today. They think that the nativity scene, that's everybody that was there with Jesus. No, they weren't there. He was in a stinky manger, and these shepherds come from up on the hill because they saw a star, and they followed the star down, and they went down, and they saw Jesus, and they went, and they, hey, there's a baby. Hey, cool. You know, he couldn't get any in because the inn was full. They wouldn't receive him, so he, had, he was born out in, the, out in the stall with the crap and all the other stuff around. I'm sure they might have cleaned it up a little bit, but it was a, it was a stall. But the wise men weren't there, but some of us believe they were. You ask some of the kids in these, oh, the wise men, they were there giving gifts. No, they weren't. No, they weren't. They was not giving gifts then. They met Jesus probably about two years, when he was about two years old, somewhere around that timeline. That's when they came to him. Some of the stuff that we believe, some of the stuff that we've been taught as kids and as young adults, there's, there's some of us, there's no truth to it. Yet we still celebrate Yet we still do it, even though we don't know what it, what it means. Even though we have no understanding of it, we just do it. Hey, let's just do it because they said to. 
let's jump off the bridge because everybody's doing it. No. Let's find out why they're jumping off the bridge and find out that it's not right because it hurts when you hit the water. We can't just follow along with stuff. You know, we're not puppets. I had a vision the other day or a dream. And this is a deep dream, but I had a dream that the, that the, um, the um, blue party was doing this. They, they, they were doing this, and they had um, Mr. Joe Biden on as a puppet, and they were just dangling him around. And, and it was really, the, 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 the dream was really provocative because they were, they were making him seem really stupid and dumb. Not that he is. He's created just like you were to be an amazing son for, for the kingdom of God. He's just made some different choices in life. But they're dangling him around and they're mocking him. And I think that's what they're doing right now. He don't even know. He's so blind to it. He don't even know. He don't even know. He don't even know that when, when, um, when they tried to change the 25th Amendment, he don't even know that Seeking that's for Donald J. Trump. It's not for Donald J. Trump. That's for him. They're going to change that because he's going to be incompetent. And Kamala Harris is going to be who steps in in his, where he's at. See, we got to see these things. we got to look through these things. But this is the dream that I had and the vision that I had. We can't be puppets to what we've been taught in the past. We have to stand our ground. You guys know that song, you got to stand for something or you'll fall for anything. You got to be your own man, not a puppet on a string. There's so much truth to that. We have to do that. We have to not be puppets in this world that we're living in today. Ephesians 4.27 says this, and do, do not give the devil any opportunity. Do not give the devil any opportunity. Where's that mic at? I have, or, hold on, I'll see who. Does anybody want to respond to that? I mean, I just, I kind of want to open this up. What do you think that means? Do not give the devil any opportunity. Does anybody want to respond to that and, and give me some feedback on it? Do not give the devil opportunity. What's that mean to you? Don't give the devil an inch. Don't give him an inch. Yeah, don't give the devil an inch. Coming from the mouth of a babe. Don't give the devil one inch. Anybody else? What does that mean to you? Uh, to me, it goes back to when I was in addiction. Uh, so I would give him, uh, I think drugs take control of your mind in which you should have God on your mind. So that's giving the devil control of your mind. Anybody else? Listen, I don't want to step on anybody's toe today or I don't want to come at anybody in, in, not in love because I love every one of you. And I want to see the best for you. I want your lives to just prosper. I want you guys to all be rich and wholesome and live in amazing lives. But unless we purge some of this stuff out of our life, it's not going to happen. If we give the devil part of the ground or if we play and trifle with sin, it's not going to happen. It just won't. It just won't. You can't have it both ways. You can't sit at the Lord's table and sit at the devil's table at the same time. You just can't do it. It's not going to happen. So don't give the devil any opportunity. tough sometimes being a preacher. <laughs> Can I say what's on my heart? Not condemning out of love from the bottom of my heart. 
And there were so many children last night, and just in this city, that were up and down the streets, dressed with outfits on, that I wouldn't want in my worst nightmare. But we're to the point that we think some of that stuff is okay. And these scriptures I've read to you, it says not, do not give evil or the devil any opportunity. See, we think that some things are so okay and it's because some things are cute or this or this. But we're trifling in things that are not of heaven and not of God. And I know we did that down through the years. I know our parents have taught us that. I know that that's what we've learned. It's a learned thing. And I understand that. And I'm, not, and I'm not saying, this is what I'm not saying. I'm not saying that we can't enjoy things with our children. I'm not saying that we can't dress them up or we can't have a great time doing that. I'm just saying, let's do it for a different reason on a different day. Let's do it a different time. Let's change some of the characters and some of the outfits that we're putting out there on our kids. Is there anybody that would agree with me? Yes. How I many guys listen? This world is not our home. It's just not. And how we are in this world and how we teach our kids and our kids' as kids and our kids' as kids' as kids is what's going to matter because when they reach Christ, they can reach the next person for Christ and they can, the fulfilling that God has for them can be done through us now. We can change things now to where our kids and grandkids will have a different outlook on the holiday that just passed. I don't even know why it's called a holiday. If you, if you look back and... I just encourage everyone to go back and see where it started in 1930. Where this would have started at in 1930. Why it started. What the reasoning behind it starting. It's a pagan holiday. It's a demonic holiday. I'm trying to get an evangelist in here. Um, I can't remember what his name is. You guys remember what his name is? John Ramirez. I'm trying to get John Ramirez. We've sent applications for John Ramirez to come. He was a Satanist for 25 years. And God grabbed a hold of him. But for him to explain to us what happens on that dark night, on the demonic side, in the spirit realm, even in the human realm. See, these guys, these demonic, these people who are devil worshipers, they go to church, but they go to church at 7 o'clock at night till 5 o'clock in the morning. We can barely get through an hour and a half without figuring out what we're going to eat for lunch. They go through all night long because they have a mission. They have something they want to get accomplished. And that's to kill, steal, and destroy your lives, your kids' lives, and everyone that you ever come in contact with. That's their mission. That's their job. To put suicidal thoughts, to put thoughts in your mind of murder, all these things in your mind. I've had murder thoughts before. I, I planned stuff out before. I don't know why. I just like the enemy wants to do that. He wants to confuse you and trip you up and get you to a point where you are so confused, so messed up in your mind that you don't know what you're going to do. You don't know right from wrong. And wrong seems like the easiest thing to step into. Wrong seems like the easiest choice, the thing to step into. But if we can get him here to explain those things. And if we can get that kind of strength to get on our knees and pray throughout the night. When I go to sleep at night, I say, God, take me places. When I dream tonight, I don't want to just sleep. When I'm in bed tonight, I don't want to just sleep, but I want to be taken places that I can minister, that I can help, that I can grow. Take me to heaven. Take me back. Fly me here. Fly me there. Let me help people here or over here. And I do. One of my favorite dreams is when I'm flying. And it's a reoccurring thing. I'm literally flying in the country, in the city. It's just so peaceful. But I see so much. I get to see so much. First Peter says, be sober in the spirit. Be on the alert. 
Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. You know, guys, you lock the doors at your house at night because you don't want someone to break in. But when do we ever think about locking the door of our heart to what we take in? To what we take in. When do we ever think of locking that door? To not let certain things in. There's certain people I won't let in my house. And there's certain things that we shouldn't let in our, our house. Our soul. It's where the Lord resides. And if he's living in here, why would I want to bring something into this house that's going to be displeasing to him? Why would I want to do that? First Thessalonians said, abstain from every form of evil. Every means all. Every means all. Remember when you're making cookies and you tell the boys to stay out of all the cookies? Boys, how many cookies can you get? None. When she says, stay out of the cookies, you can't have any cookies. Until she says, till they cool down. Right? Am I right? All. Abstain from every form of evil, from all evil. Isaiah 5.20 says, Woe to those who call evil good and good evil. Woe to those who call evil good and good evil. I mean, this past... The day that just passed yesterday. Some people think that that's good. It's not one ounce of good in it. It's really not one ounce of good in it. I just encourage you guys, don't take my word for it. Dig in. Google's a great thing. You guys can Google anything. That's a crooked company, but you can still Google while they're still afloat and while they're still operating. You can Google and find out anything you want. Some of it's true, some of it might not be. So you need to check your check and then check it again and make sure it's a good source. I encourage you to go to some of the, um, there's some good Bible sources out there on some of this type of stuff. And, I, and I'm telling you what, last year, last year, I would have been, I would have said to my grandkids, come, we're going to have, bring your little costumes. I'm going to give you candy. This year, no. The Lord's purging me. He showed me some things. I've seen some things. And I'm just not going to let it happen. That's for me. You guys don't have to take my word for it. Just whatever the Lord says to you. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Whatever he says to you, do First Thessalonians 5.21 But examine everything carefully and hold fast to that which is good. And again, abstain from every form of evil. James 4.7 Submit yourself therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. When you belong to Jesus, the enemy of this world has no power over you. The only power, listen to me, the only power that he has is the power that you give him. You have to give him that power. He can't, he can't just throw his power against you without you giving him permission. You have to give him the power or the authority to reign over you like, like he does in some people's lives. So when you belong to Jesus, the devil has no power over you except for what you give him. This is the judgment. This is in John 3. That the light has come into the world, and men love the darkness rather than the light, for their deeds were evil. For everyone who does evil hates the light, and does not come to the light for fear that his deeds will be exposed. I'm telling you right now, come to the light, let your deeds be exposed. Who cares? What you've been, what you've been through, what you've done, it doesn't matter. There's people that's done worse, but they're able to be forgiven. Because Jesus is standing at the door knocking. 
He wants to forgive you of every sin, no matter what it is, the depth of your sin, the lifestyles that you live. He wants to forgive and to change and to make you whole and to make you a brand new person. That's what he chooses for you. That's what he wants for you. But then again, you have to let him have that reign over your life and to be able to obtain those type of things, to be able to obtain, obtain the goodness that he wants for you. You have to give him permission to do that, just like you have to give the enemy permission to reign over your life. It's all in your hands. Your free will being to do whatever you want to do. You can do whatever you want to do. But you can do what's right. And you can purge and clean up some things in your life. And it's going to take you one step further, one step closer to the man and daughter that God has called you to be. That's what it is. It's all about identity. Because when you know who you are and know who he is, then it'll change things in your life. You'll be able to respond to people different. You'll be able to love people different. You'll be able to engage in situations different. If you're at a job that just a horrible, horrible job, you might not be where God called you to have a job at. So he might move you to another job. See, he wants what you want. He wants your heart's desires to come fulfilled and be fulfilled. He wants what you want. He really does. But you have to give him that permission to change your life, to bring these things in life. If you're able to, let's stand. My prayer team will come forward. If you have a badge for Tammy's, Tammy will give you a badge. So we got 10 minutes here. I'm trying to wrap it up. We got 10 minutes. Food will still be there. I promise you. It'll still be there. The restaurant will still be open. So we might have to go home and cook. And I know kids, sometimes it's hard for kids to stay longer, but we're going to. Uh, we've only been here an hour and 20 minutes. So we're doing good. we got 10 more minutes. I mean, I asked the Lord, I said, can we do the services in an hour and a half? Some services you go to, they're two, they're two hours or longer. But I asked the Lord if we can do an hour and a half for the morning service and the second service. And maybe if the second service goes a little bit longer, that's okay. Um, I'm not going to try to. But I asked him and he gave me permission to do it. I just, just like I talked to my father, I just said, hey, Dad, can we do it this way? Um, because, you know, I feel like the people in this region are, this is what they're accustomed to, and we're gonna, but, but we're going to break through. There's going to be a time that we're going to break through, and we're going to go past the hour and a half time, and people are going to want to say, you know what, we'll just soon stay and pray. We'll just soon stay and get rid of some of this stuff. Clean up, because it's going to change things for you. I promise it will. Let's pray. Father, we do love you this morning. And as we're praying, if you have something on your heart, come and pray. As I'm praying, just come forward. Come talk to somebody. They're not going to share. You don't have to tell them nothing about your life. You just stand in front of them and they can just pray for you. Father, we just thank you for today. Father, you know each and every person here, God, you know how this message, you asked me to te teach this, Lord. And Father, I just hope that I just justified it in the way that you wanted to present it, God. But I ask that, that whoever this would have affected today, Father, you would reach into their life right now. You would call them to the altar. That they could change some things. Doesn't matter what it is. There's no condemnation here. This is all in love. For, Father, you are love, and we're trying to practice the true, untainted version of what love really is. So, God, we ask right now that you would just minister to each heart here. You would go through each seat. The Holy Spirit, wind would blow. If you don't know the Holy Spirit, come, come up. Pray.
If you don't know Jesus, come up and pray. If you want to purge things out of your life, come up and pray. If you're on the edge of suicide, come up and pray. If you're on the edge of divorce, come up and pray. God wants to change your life. He wants you to live. He wants your marriage to work. He wants your kids and grandkids to be free from the things that we were taught. For them to be free of the things that we were taught that was never right. Doesn't matter. We need to pray. Come up and pray. I promise you it's going to change your life. It's going to change your life. I'm not going to call anybody out. I'm not going to do that today. May the Holy Spirit do that. Holy Spirit, call them out today. Show them, God. Show them what you want for them. Holy Spirit, move. 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 Can I get someone else to come up and pray with people? Everybody else. 